Hey, real quick, before we get started, Mind Pump's Black Friday sale is going on right now. The biggest discounts of all year on all of our fitness programs. Every single MAPS program, 65% off. That's a huge discount. Every single one, 65% off with the code BF. Maps. That's the letter B, the letter F, and then the word maps. That's not all. We also have bundles. Bundles are where we've already discounted multiple programs and put them together. You can just go ahead and take an additional 50% off all bundles. Every single bundle, 50% off with the code BF bundles. That's the letter B, the letter F bundles. Get all of these at mapsfitnessproducts.com. Again, Maps Fitness Products, 65% off all programs, BF Maps, 50% off all bundles, BF Bundles. Also, if you want to check out some of our apparel, it's a Black Friday sale for all that stuff too. Crazy stuff going on. We got 25% off at-home gym accessories, 30% off all shirts and sweatshirts, 35% off all hats, 50% off our mirror drinkware, and 60% off all Maps tees. Just go to mindpumpstore.com for that stuff right there. In this Mind Pump episode, we actually interview one of our listeners, one of our fans. She won a contest to come up on the show. And what we didn't know was this person was extremely accomplished and very, very interesting. Her name is Helen Lynn. She's a personal trainer with some incredible accomplishments. You won't believe the stuff you hear in this episode She's a badass. We have a lot of fun talking to her in this episode. Now, we did talk about some of her favorite supplements. So she did mention Organifi, which is one of our sponsors. By the way, you can get 20% off all the products if you use the code MINDPUMP at Organifi.com forward slash MINDPUMP. We also brought up Z-Biotics, which is a product you take before you drink alcohol to prevent the negative effects from alcohol. Now, she doesn't really drink. Uh, but we did bring it up, and of course, Adam and Justin piped up because they do love to drink. Um, and you get a discount with Zbiotics as well. Just go to zbiotics.com forward slash mind pump for 10% off your first order. Now, if you want to learn more about Helen, go check her out at happyhelenfitness.com. But we do think you're going to love this episode. It's always fun to talk to our fans. It's even more fun and exciting when they're surprisingly more fit and accomplished than the hosts of Mind Pump. So we know you're going to enjoy this episode. Helen, welcome to Mind Pump Studio. Oh. Wow. Yeah. 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 So you were the per- you were the person that won the contest. The big winner. The big winner. Oh yeah. So I have a question for you. Okay. Uh, you got to be honest. Okay. Okay. So who's your least favorite host? <laughs> yeah, we got to start and low. Why is it Adam? <laughs> <laughs> Whatever, Sal. She just took the pressure off of you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> totally. Totally. So how long you've been listening to the show? How did you enter into the contest? What happened? Uh, I've been listening to the show probably about two years. And um, and then I saw the contest on, maybe you guys sent an email. So someone sent out an email mm-hmm. or maybe it was on the forum. Probably a little bit of both. Mm. And I thought, yeah, I want that. Yeah, <laughs> who, wins, yeah. who wins contests in their adult age? I know, no, right? right? I feel like they're Ever. fake half the time. Yeah, yeah. well, yeah. that's the thing. Yeah. <laughs> now, you're, you're like extremely accomplished. So uh, we get this bio <laughs> from our assistant, right? Because you're coming in and we want to have you on uh, the podcast. That's part of the, you know, yeah. the, the contest. We want to know what we're in for. And it's like, yeah, let's, let's, get to know you a little bit and um i'm t- i'm i'm being totally honest and all needed, of us we felt needed, insecure she had to give yeah. us multiple sheets one sheet wasn't oh enough for you. yeah we, we need, yeah it was actually like some heavy reading to get through <laughs> all of it yeah you're you're a badass I, how did yeah. you how did you get into uh fitness or athletic competition because I, I don't want to give it all away yet but yeah, we'll there's some stuff on there that's pretty crazy um Yes, there are crazy yeah, things. Yeah. Um, how did I get started in fitness in general? Yeah. Um, well, I guess that goes, I mean, it starts back from, I was a swimmer. I was. Okay. A, I started as a swimmer. At a what kid. age? Really young or? Uh, fifteen, which isn't actually that young because by the time I was fifteen and I joined swim team, everyone was swimming at nationals, and I was just learning to swim. Mm. So at the time, it didn't feel that young, but obviously, it feels young now. But I joined a swim team, loved it, and that's I guess where it started in terms of my love for athletic pursuits. But I just thought I didn't realize 
I, did, I wouldn't call myself an athlete. I just was a swimmer. Now, so were well, you competitive right out the gates? Yeah, that's what I want to know. Oh, yeah. I mean, I did club swim team. Um, but uh, no, I was never, I wasn't any good, but I made up for enthusiasm. Mm. That was oh, my thing. So right. like in high school, they always gave me the most inspirational award, right? <laughs> Versus, you know, like instead of the MVP, it was, right. you, well, you were really looking like a clown on the side cheering, but we'll give you that <laughs> reward, you know? So that was my thing, you know? You I was great good attitude. At, yeah, I have a great, yeah. <laughs> a great attitude awesome. award. Yeah. That's so, very hu- that's very humble of you. Did, now, did you were you though competitive with yourself? So maybe you weren't uh, you know, you weren't as much uh, competitive as far as feeling like you were the MVP. But were were you the type that's very competitive with yourself? Oh, I mean, being an Asian, you know, growing up with strict family in which you're supposed <laughs> to be a doctor, a lawyer. Mm. Um, I was none of those things. Was not interested in math and science at all. So um, I think it kind of funneled itself into athletic pursuits. So that meant I had to be the best. Mm. But the problem is, it's really hard to be the best. But you don't know that as a young kid because you're taught that you know you can do anything you want and you can be the best so yes so I was very competitive with myself in the sense that I wanted to be number one but I really didn't know how to get there um so I think that's probably why I ended up doing so many different types of activities later in life because I think I I switch things when I think well maybe this one is the one I'm gonna be the best in well talk about (laughs) T- tell me a little yeah. bit more about that's interesting. Like the the pressure as a kid to you know go down the lawyer or doctor route, and then you push back. What was that like? I mean, was there was terrible? Yeah, I was gonna say was your was there a lot of like rift between you and your parents early on, and then they at what point did they accept the direction you were gonna do? What was what has that been like for you? Um, I'm not sure they've ever accepted, <laughs> but uh, growing up, uh, I didn't get into an Ivy League school. That's that's one you're supposed to get an Ivy League school. Strike one. <laughs> Uh, yeah. <laughs> yep. so just Boston University, no big deal. That's <laughs> right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Didn't get an Ivy League. Um, you know, I got A's and B's. Not good. You know, got to get all A's. Mm. Um, and I was interested in theater. Terrible. Oh my gosh, my family, you know, did not like that either. Um, and they weren't really particularly in love with the athletic stuff either. So I just, so I think I just completely rebelled. And as I got mm. older, I just decided to do all the things that they didn't really want me to do. So I think some of this is like rebellion. Like, no, I'm not going to enjoy studying. You're super punk rock. This is, (laughs) this is fascinating. So, uh, cause I I have young kids and so these guys, so the way you rebelled was to just be good at sports (laughs) and get A's and B's. Yeah. Damn. Right. Yeah. I got to yeah. meet your parents. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Most kids rebel. They do drugs or, you know, they go yeah. they get yeah. pregnant. They get all whatever. goth and crazy. You yeah. Know? yeah. But it's like trying to, I think in the back of your subconsciously, you want that validation. Because sure. I know all my sport athletic pursuits were all for validation. It was all mm. trying to find some of the self worth that, you know, I didn't get from my family because I never did those specific things. So I think in, in my back of subconsciously, I thought if I was best at this thing, it would win their approval. Oh, yeah. Mm. But they never gave their approval really. Really, um, so I think I just, you know, as an adult, you just have to make peace with these. So things. you just continued yeah. kicking ass, <laughs> <laughs> just kicking ass in all these different pursuits. <laughs> what was the next one that followed up swimming? What was your? Um, yeah, so it was, it was swimming. So swimming has been a huge part of my life for a good, I don't know, probably 15 years. So regular stuff. Like you were a swimmer too, right? I w- no, I was never on a team. I was just oh. good at it. Like I could get, oh, I, man. the first time okay. I got- she looks like a swimmer. The, yeah, yeah, well, yeah, yeah. It wasn't until, no, this was not ha- until, and I get, this isn't about me, right? But I mean- He's like, I'm not a model. I'm just handsome. <laughs> <laughs> I was just I built like swim. a swimmer with I got the swim. Swim. Listen, <laughs> listen, Linda, listen, okay? This, when, I was, when I was 25, uh, in the middle of like being a big meathead guy, I was like 230 pounds at this time. Um, yeah. We had this thing at 20, 24 fitness where all the managers in the company got together and they had like this little like you know um you know try or uh, not a triathlon but it was like a indoor swimming biking running uh type of competition oh, sure. uh, yeah. and so and they grouped us all up and somebody said you know oh, I'll take the bike I'll take the run and, and I just got kind of thrown into the pool and I was like okay that's cool because I always liked to swim as a kid I was born on the lake and doing things like that and you know when I was a kid racing around I was pretty quick so let's see why well, was racing against a former ironman and then a former navy seal guy <laughs> and I whooped him and I was <laughs> I was like in not I was not in like swimming shape at all 
And that was like the first time I had realized like, oh, maybe I'm like, would have been good at this. And so I never really slammed though competitively. I just, I think I was built for it. I got a narrow waist, skinny legs, and then a big wide back. So, so you went into bodybuilding. Yeah. 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 The, the worst. Yeah. Well, like you, I do the opposite fit. of what everybody yeah. thinks I should do. So, right. Exactly. So Helen, Sorry. so yes. did you, Swimming. in terms of, the, yeah. did you, when did you start to notice the, the benefits for yourself? Obviously you're saying you're doing it because you wanted some validation, but at some, cause I started working out yeah. because I was insecure, but uh, the side effect of that was I started to really notice the benefits for, you know, feeling confident, uh, you know, learning about hard work and effort and all the, all the wonderful benefits you get from fitness. Did you start to pick up on that as well? Did it make you feel good? Was this something that kind of molded you? Um, not when I was that young. Mm. So, I mean, so, yeah, because it start when I started as a, it, yes, later in life for sure, probably when I got to the rock climbing part of my life, then yes, that's when I actually care about fitness. So it started with swimming. Uh, as a kid and then I when I went to college I was too slow to swim in college so I just did theater and then after college I started picking up swimming again and did I mean master swimming is just 18 and up it sounds impressive but it just means you're an adult and they call you masters wow. so we did master swimming and I did all the competitions there you know um, and then I started doing open water swimming so that's just when you swim out in the ocean or lake or whatever so no lane lines which is way harder well, you can't see the bottom yeah. you know people are afraid of sharks all that stuff so I started doing open water swimming uh, because I was getting bored with doing like every competition pool swimming under the sun. So I wanted something else. So someone introduced me to open water swimming and I started doing open water swimming. And then probably there was this one summer I came to California a lot because I did every open water race there was over here because you guys have great oceans and races. So mm -hmm. I did something like 18 races in like 12 weeks or something. Whoa. I just like flew Ooh. back and forth between Boston and here and just did like, you know, I did Alcatraz, Golden Gate Bridge, all that stuff. And then I was like, well, what do I do now? Like I did all these races. So then I started doing uh, marathon swimming. This all leads to the fitness, I <laughs> yeah. promise. Uh, I started doing marathon swimming, which you swim over um, 10 miles. No, over 6.2 miles is marathon swimming. Mm. So that's when you swim in the open water for over a certain amount of distance. That's terrifying to me. Yeah. Just I to know. think yeah. you're swimming for that. How long are you in the water for? Well, at least minimally probably around three hours or, m or more. And or so you're more. Usually that's the shorter end. Of so it. you're swimming for yeah. three hours in open water. Did you have any seaweed yes. tickle your legs or oh, anything? Oh yeah. I mean, yeah. you run into all sorts of stuff yeah. when that's you're kind of water creepy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> It's part of the joy, you know? <laughs> okay. That'd make me go fast. Sure. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Get out of here. Yeah. I can't imagine you dog paddling for three hours. I can't either. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I could do it. I've done three minutes. Yeah. Yeah. So, he back floats. So I, I read in your bio that you competed in these like super cold Cold water. Oh, yes. What yeah. is that? Yeah. So after the marathon swims, in which I did a few of those, I was like, well, what's next? So then I started doing, I didn't want to stop swimming in the wintertime because I was just feeling very stubborn. And so I thought to myself, summer's not over if I just keep swimming in the ocean. And I live in Boston. And um, as it got colder, I just kept swimming. And the next thing I knew it was like February and it was snowing and I was still going out there. And I was, oh, my yeah. body was acclimating to the cold. Like you guys know your body can acclimate to mm -hmm. anything. And I just kind of rode the temperature down as, as the water temperature came down. And next thing I know, I was swimming in the middle of winter and found out there's a whole community of people who do ice swimming, a lot in Russia and uh, Sweden and yeah, crazy other countries. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, the ice swimming is- the polar bear crew. Is, yeah, well, that's the thing. We make fun of them because it's not polar plunge. We're actually swimming. Uh huh. <laughs> yeah. So we're, so we're big snobs. We're big snobs about it. There's Only no, idiots would say that. No plunges. <laughs> and, ah! <laughs> also, no wetsuits. Wow. Okay, so that's okay. the thing. We're purists, right? You have mm -hmm. to swim with English Channel rules, which is when you swim the English Channel, English Channel rules, you swim only swim cap, goggles, and bathing suit. Nothing else. No assistance. Oh, oh, hardcore. Wow. Yeah, yeah. So that's now, these are all the rules. What? It, what? It, okay. So what is yeah. driving you at this point? Is this like? <laughs> yeah. Is this pure rebellion right now, yeah. or because you, you're you're you you're saying determined. that you're not very good at it, but yeah. that you're doing all these competitions, you're getting crazier and crazier levels of it? <laughs> what is it that's the driving force of this at this time? Yeah, no, it's a great question. Um, well, the driving force is wanting to stand out, I think, because I wasn't good enough for any of these things. I just did them. The, I would, for me, it was the act. Like marathon swims is great because you just had to finish them. Mm. In competition, you have to be the fastest. Mm. You have to be the strongest. You have to, you know, those kind of things. But in these 
weird things I do. You just have to do it and not die. And <laughs> it's a miracle, right? It's such like, a relief. Right. Yeah. So like just the act of doing it is is good enough. So I think that's what I was doing. I was trying to find, and I mean, honestly, the rush of, you guys know, like you did the ice baths thing. The rush afterwards feels amazing oh, from yeah. an ice swim. Yeah. So um, after all the shakes are gone, it feels like endorphins rushing. So there is a, definitely an endorphin for addiction for sure for some of these niche things but the hmm. ice swimming for yeah. sure um it's a there's a thing called an ice mile which is you swim one mile under 41 degree uh, temperature and then if did you, you do that yeah if wow. you do it you get a red jacket and you get to be part of this club <laughs> so you did that ice, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah what yeah. is wow. that they, what is they, that that's pretty cool. hold on a second what does that feel like because i've done yes. ice dips yeah. in temperature water like that yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah and this is the truth now if i go beyond two minutes i'm like super proud of myself yeah because it's endurance but how do you breathe and manage that because you're, you know you're tensing up so much um well i mean you know is it's you just i mean i train for it for a you know a few months but you you just keep going out as it gets colder but watching your time and making sure you're not staying in too long and obviously having people watch you and whatnot but you just it's just constant exposure and pushing it a little bit longer at a time it's very dangerous don't get me wrong yeah. but i mean it took me 33 minutes so i was th in the water for about 30 wow. minutes oh to, do, my God. to do a mile at that temperature wow. and you come out and they wrap you up in blankets all right and you shiver for like 15 minutes and then you're fine wow right. but, so it seems yeah. like your superpower uh that you might <laughs> no i mean seriously because it looks like you were searching for your superpower yeah. and it looks like you discovered that it was tenacity am i uh, am i am i correct I don't know, maybe. <laughs> like you just go after it and you, and you yeah. go and you do it? Sounds I, right. I just go and do it. You're right. I just go out and I, I do it because worse. I mean, no one else, not, not a lot of people are. So wow. you kind of. So we're, yeah. yeah, we're doing. Okay. So now we're yeah. doing, now we're moving on to crazy swimming. No, okay. Ice swimming. What well, comes next? Well, hold on. Before you say that, I want to ask you about this, Helen. You, you probably, you'll definitely know more than I will. I read somewhere that it, one of the sports where women uh, compete uh, directly against men and oftentimes beat them is in endurance swimming or yeah. cold swimming in yeah. particular. Is this true? I mean, from what I read and also from the community, it seems true because marath I mean, there's a lot of guys as well, but for sure the endurance... I don't know. I mean, maybe we store fat in certain places that really help protect the organs so we can stay out there longer. Uh, but yeah, so I, I was... I mean, I don't know. Who knows? I don't really know. Mm. I just... I really enjoy the rush... Is all I can yeah, because I remember <laughs> I remember reading somewhere that this woman broke the world record, it, and it was all uh, it was both genders, right? It, and yeah. she crushed it. And then in the article, they said that women uh, seem to perform really well, uh, period, in in these kinds of sports. So it's so when you're competing, yeah. are you is it uh, is it just open or is it just women, just men? Do they put everybody together? Well, in something like an ice mile, it's not a race. You literally just do it and complete it. It's Got all it. about completion. So just you do it and that's so, it. Yeah, be, just because it's so dangerous that you mm -hmm. just need to get the right temperature and be able, be able to finish it because we've watched people finish unconsciously and to be taken to the hospital. Wow. What? Yeah, because it's that, because it's hypothermia? hypothermia. Are they following yeah. you with like a little boat just yeah, in case? Yeah, so there's yeah. there's boat and all that stuff and, and, and also your mind, I, I haven't experienced it, but you can just black out and keep swimming. What? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so you got to keep your head above the water the whole time? No, no, you <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh my god. Go. Yes, so I read a study on that actually. Yeah. You can't breathe underwater. Yeah, really? <laughs> you want a snorkel though. Yeah, so if the faster you are the better cuz you can generate more heat and also get out of the water sooner. Right. Right? But if you're slow, then maybe having a little more body fat will help too. So it kind of, you know, individual. But wow. Now, is it common that in almost every one of these races someone's getting pulled out of the water? Because they don't make it or well, black I mean, out. again, in terms of ice mile, it's not a day like a set race. You just it's like swimming. Well, maybe you, swimming the English Channel. I don't know if you guys know. If you swim the English Channel, it's not like a race day. You pick. You have to hire a boat, and they have tides, oh. and you have to just go with the tides. And so you just kind of wait for your window of tide for English Channel. And with the ice mile, you kind of just you have to just plan that day and go. There's oh, no interesting. race, mm -hmm. and so you just have to have an observer and staff, and then you complete it under these specific rules and submit to an organization that you know deems it that you follow all the rules. Mm -hmm. oh, so yeah, so it's not a race day. They would never organize something like that. I think because it's just too dangerous for yeah. people to try and make it that competitive mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. you just want to finish. Now, are you yeah. using uh, are you lifting weights as part of your training for swimming at this point, or was that something? that happened after no i was pure cardio for the first 20 years of my life and then pure endurance mm. okay so that was that's very important the first half of life i was like cardio swimming endurance crazy ice things um and then no 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 lifting at all no strength training whatsoever nothing when did you discover <laughs> that 
Uh, so then at one point I was having a swimmer crisis or identity crisis or something, which people were like, this is Helen. She's that crazy swimmer or crazy ice swimmer. And I just, that my identity was always known as just a swimmer because mm -hmm. that's all I've been doing. I was on, you know, board, like swimming boards. I travel all these races are so involved that this is just all consuming of my life, which I love. But I don't know what happened one day. I woke up and was like, oh my God, is this all I am? Just a swimmer? Am I nothing else? Am I an athlete? Am I the person that didn't go to, you know, Harvard? Like what, who am I? Am I just a swimmer? So I was having this identity crisis. So then I started to, on a whim, try rock climbing. And I found out that I had really strong lats, maybe from the swimming. Oh, so, for sure. Yeah. yeah. So I was just really good at rock climbing with upper body strength. So I was completely shocked that I just did some rock climbing and then I could do a bunch of pull-ups. And I was like, this is amazing. I could never do pull-ups before. <laughs> so, uh, so I had some naturally strong lats, I guess, from the swimming. And that's when the rock climbing started. And when you rock climb, you have to really be <clears throat> fit. Like swimming, you can be... You can eat unhealthy. You don't have to weigh a certain way. You can be fast swimmer and be bo different body shapes for most. Obviously, we're not talking about elite level. We're talking sure. about people. But with rock climbing, you had to be fit. You, people had muscles. When I started rock climbing, I realized people had muscles. Yeah. Swimming, people didn't have muscles. Uh -huh. I mean, not again, not elite level, but rare, like especially marathon swims. If you ever see a group of marathon swimmers, you would be like, those people work out, but um, but just the body shape of the people who do marathon swimming. But uh, but yeah, when I started rock climbing, I was like, wow, people look amazing. They have muscles, they have definition. They probably eat right. You have to hold your whole body way up with your fingers. Yeah, I was going to say, because yeah. some body fat in the water can actually yes. make you a little bit more buoyant. Uh, but in rock climbing, it's just weight, <laughs> yeah. right? right? It's hard to pull yourself up. No advantage heavy. there. No advantage. And right. did that appeal to you? Like seeing that going like, oh, wow, they're all really strong. And is this what led you to the gym? Yes. Well, so I, I once, well, so I started climbing and I was developing muscles and I was like, oh, cool. I like these things. This is great. <laughs> um, and I think because I was already trying to find a new identity anyway. So I really thought that was really cool and it seemed cool to have muscles um and i wanted to be a better climber so i really wanted to develop some more strength to complement that and i think this is also around the time um so i started lifting weights and not knowing what i was doing doing the whole body split thing and looking at reading every article under the sun probably under bodybuilding.com oh, i was gonna ask you so, <laughs> so you got your information from the bodybuilding websites on how to work out sorry we yeah, all started I, there i copied so many like our, our workouts on, i was well also the other thing is uh, this is very funny at the time i was like i, I want a six pack right like everyone but yeah. not like 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 the bodybuilder six pack in women that has the six you wanted a vein Yes, I want like the five percent, but I didn't know that that was. I didn't understand the things I understand now. How ridiculous that really is. Mm -hmm. But at the time, I was new to fitness. I was new to being climber, and I just thought, and I had the mentality of, well, if you put your mind to it, you can do anything. So I was like, I I'm going to get the six pack, and I and I think that's also part of the reason why I end up asking you for help Sal yes for a lot of things because I was just focused on looking a certain way because it just looked cool on the wall mm -hmm. too um so that was when I was like I want to look a certain way I want to get a six pack and, and everyone's going to think I'm amazing because I have a six pack now are you competing <laughs> in rock climbing or is this just for fun and is it indoor or outdoor it's never for fun. So. Okay. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's always for competition. With you, and I can, I'm getting that yeah, gist getting here that. right now. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, so I did a lot of competitions uh, because that's what I do. I go in, I do competitions, and I cried at every single one of them because with rock climbing competitions, it's very subjective. With rock climbing, have you guys ever climbed? Rock no. climb? Any of you? No, yeah, no I, I, athlete, I, I stepped up the curb yeah, a couple like times. Boulders, but yeah, like boulders. Yeah. Could you yeah, imagine boulders. him climbing a rock? Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I didn't those, stay long. Look at those short little stubby paws <laughs> and, the, <laughs> and those big old cakes. Yeah. There's no way he's climbing I, up a rock. I am not a climber body. He, people, yeah, he pulls the rock down. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 I do climb a lot, though, with my boys, but it's nothing nothing like you know what sure. you're talking about. Sure, yeah. So what is, yeah, what does a competition look like? Is it just for time? Like who can get up to the top first? Or Yeah, I mean, so in rock climbing competitions, you have to hit hit a certain amount of boulders with, that was worth a certain amount of points oh. and then they kind of do that but the thing with rock climbing is that everything's subjective so swimming is great because you can be the fastest or the slowest there's a time rock climbing when you you can argue about who's the best rock climber because every climb is right, the path they take right the, 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 yeah the problem the way you solve it the rue and and your body type right if you and i went rock climbing we have very different beta which is kind of the 
roadmap to how you climb it. Mm. So like if Adam climbs something, he might be able to just reach something, whereas I have to get my feet up and do a whole thing, but I'm shorter and more flexible, so that might help. I so see. like how you do it is dependent on that person, mm. but how how that person sets the problem is all dependent on the setter. Mm. Right, so everything's subjective, so it's kind of hard to measure who's a good rock climber. I mean, obviously, you can tell people's levability, but in terms of how do you judge who's the best at a competition? Now that's got to be frustrating. Yes, that's, that's like why. bodybuilding. You know, that's it's one of those subjective. Things, yeah, it's so it's so hard. Like, wait mm. a second, that's not fair. Right, so I cried after every one because again, I was trying to be the best at something, and I couldn't. And even though I would win, I would still cry because I didn't understand how what that meant. And if I didn't win, I would cry. <laughs> I think my boyfriend was just like, stop doing these competitions. <laughs> this is so emotional. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this is really fun. And I'm yeah. like, I don't know what having fun is. <laughs> I just have to do these things and be competitive, right? Yeah. So that was a miserable. Now, was the strength training uh, helping you when you were when you started doing it? It was for sure. I remember asking you on a on a on a DM. I was like, "Should I climb or lift weights first? And you were like, "Just do whatever's priority first. Yes. And um, so, and I was like, "Okay, I think it's climbing. So I would climb first, and I'll lift like that afternoon. I don't really know because I don't think it got me that six pack, no matter what I did mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> that I kept trying to go for. But um, I mean, I think, as you guys know, if you want to be better at the sport, you just have to do things in that sport. Yes. Like no supplement things are going yeah. to make Very that, specific. that huge amount. It helps, like maybe if you're really weak, but I didn't find sp lifting itself benefit, you know, your finger strength, you know what I mean? Yeah, like yeah, that yeah. kind of stuff. Not not so much. Not as much as the actual rock climbing itself. <laughs> right. right, but I enjoyed lifting. Yeah. It made me feel good and strong, so I enjoy the feeling. Of well, the type of sure. the type of grip strength you need for rock climbing is is quite specific uh, to rock climbing. There's definitely general hand strength, but like if I, for example, were to, 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 to hold onto a barbell or squeeze a squeeze, you know, uh, test against uh, a high level rock climber, I would probably do pretty well, but mm -hmm. hanging off of rocks, <laughs> grabbing different positions, using the fingertips the way you guys do, yeah. I would, I would get killed. It's a totally different kind of strength, uh, stamina, and you need a certain level of toughness and correct me if I'm wrong in your fingers, because, yeah. you know, like I said, I can hold the heavy barbell, but if I put my fingertips on something to try and squeeze... It, the pain makes me let go because I just I don't have the toughness in my fingertips. But you get super connected to your body, though. I'm sure, like a lot, that, of, a lot of carryover, yeah, for, yeah, for that going into weightlifting. For sure. So yeah, it's all finger strength and and through your toes as well, and also keeping core tension when you're doing an over, upside down overhang, mm -hmm. as we call it. But I mean, it's 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 really fun and it's great. But the thing with rock climbing is also you have to use your brain a lot, so you have to solve. It's a puzzle. Yeah. When you look at a climb, you have to solve it to see how to get up it, doing this move, doing that. So a lot of people like it because it's it's using your brain. Yeah, cerebral too. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Cool. And I didn't love that. Any part favorite? Of <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to use my brain. I just wanted to work out. Yeah. Any of your fa any favorite climbs that you've done? Any notable ones? Um, no. Well, so I'm a boulder, so I don't do any rope climb. My friends make fun of me, but I, I'm a mm. pure boulder. Be and the reason for this is, bo so bouldering, for people who don't know, is basically you just climb as high as you're willing to fall. So that means you're climbing small rocks, mm -hmm. which could be like 10. I mean, there are some high boulders, 10 to 15 feet, maybe even 20. And then you just jump down onto a crash pad if you're outside. Oh, yeah, yeah. A or castle like rock, they do that yeah. all yeah. the time over here. Yeah, so I don't do ropes. So with ropes, it's endurance. Mm -hmm. So the moves are a little bit less difficult, but you have a lot of form endurance is there more explosivity yeah. though in, in some of those moves with the bouldering i've with seen the bouldering i stuff. like because it's like five really hard moves so you got to think it's more like fast twitch st strength and explosive movements versus uh, ro uh rope climbing is like uh you know endurance oh moves. interesting so that's mm -hmm. why i really love bouldering because i've been doing endurance stuff all my life so so different yes oh very cool yes yes now did you go from there to the olympic lifting or did you go from there to the ninja, ninja warrior? warrior um so rock, so with rock climbing i started climbing and i realized oh yeah i'm kind of kind of relatively good at this and i've always been a fan of american ninja warrior who isn't mm -hmm. and i as i did more rock climbing i could see how that related to ninja warrior and i was like i wonder if i can do that and so i just went to a local ninja gym there's one near my house and i just went to an adult class and that you know and and i realized i had some good upper body strength so uh, and then i just started training at that ninja gym and when you go to a ninja gym <clears throat> most people on there have applied for the show or been on the show so you're already kind of in the community so people really you know um encourage you to apply for the show so that's what i did so uh, then i just applied hmm. for the show 
I don't know, two years into um, probably climbing and ninjaing at the gym. Do you, do you? I mean, every ninja cross trains with climbing. Okay. So because the of course I've seen yeah. it, and then the smoke bombs. <laughs> right. yes. wrong, wrong ninja. Gym. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> what's I went to the wrong place. What's the application process look like? Oh yeah, um, it's very. I tell everyone, everyone should do this. This is not difficult. You literally just go on their website. It's like a six-page application. You fill out information. You tell your story. It's about your story, and you submit a video, uh, two to three minutes long. So that's the main thing is that you really want to. I mean, it's for a TV show. You kind of really want to sell yourself and make yourself seem interesting. Mm-hmm. So they pick you for the show. Because here's the thing, if you're a guy, there are so many uh, jacked looking fit dude with upper body strength. So many. So how do you stand out in the video? Mm. Now, yeah. in terms of the guy. actual course, <laughs> yeah, 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 actually, yeah. isn't it like uh, there's a, there's a bit of dif- a disadvantage for people that are a little bit shorter? Yes. How how was that in terms of like, oh, like yeah. navigating through that? It's much harder. I mean, I had to be much more explosive, which I was not at the time. Um, but uh, I was never, you know, an explosive athlete by any means. Especially in climbing, I was very static. But. Um, yeah, no, so it's much harder and you had to really, I, my biggest thing was training ninja was working on explosive movements, mm-hmm. jumping high, jumping over, that kind of stuff, imbalance, agil- or oh, agility, yeah. that agility as well, because I had good upper body, but in the beginning, a lot of it is agility and and explosive. Now, jumps. are you doing a competition first and then if you do well, then you're on TV or is it right away you're on the TV? Nope, you're right away on the TV. So you apply for the show and then they just call you if they pick you. Wow. That's it. That's How it. did you do? Huh. Uh, I fell on the a balance obstacle, the agility, of course. Um, and yeah, I was very excited by this because I just, when you're a rookie, they call you a rookie if you've never been on the show, and they you're just hoping you don't fall on the first obstacle. Yeah. That's all. You're like, don't oh, fall totally. on the yeah. first obstacle. Don't trip on the way to first <coughs> obstacle. That would be me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and here we are, Sal step. He fell. Ah. <laughs> all right, next guy. Well, you only get one shot, and you don't know what the course is before you go, so you have to just oh, train tough. for a variety of skill set. Mm-hmm. And just hope that I mean, and just know that it's going to transfer that day. Now, wow. when you got up there and you had yeah. already done all this training, and yeah. you finally get to see, were you like fuck, or were you like okay, I, I like this? Yeah, I, well, we knew the first obstacle was going to be the quad step, so we always knew that. So I was like, I can do the quad steps. Yeah, because we had train when you're in the community, like some guy had built quad steps in his backyard in mm-hmm. replica. So we, I drove to like Connecticut and just we practice on his quad. Steps. David Campbell has that up in in Scotts Valley here. So oh, okay. yeah, it's, he has got his own little course and everything. Wow. But that's yeah, that's cool. You'll wow, know that's right. yeah. Now yeah. at this time, are you are you listening to our show at this time? Uh, yes, right. So right around then, yes, for sure, because that's when it was 2018, I was a Ninja Warrior, and that's also around the time when I got coaching from you and Jessica. Yeah, yeah. yeah so yeah. it was around that time that this was all in my fitness, that that's when all fitness started happening, when I started eating better and caring about nutrition and lifting weights and listening to Mind Pump and you know, all it meshing together into one glorious. It's an awesome journey. It really is. And it, your journey f- is, although it's spectacular and it, and it happened pretty quickly, if someone sticks to it long enough, we all kind of go through that same journey. We find one thing, yours was endurance, and we push that. And then you learn that there's another element that might bring you some value. And then that teaches you a few other things. And the longer you do it, the more, I guess, the better you get at in the sense that you start to really learn about yourself and figure things out and piece things together. And every piece of the puzzle makes a big difference, doesn't it? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Well, where did, when did the Olympic lifting come in? Um, so after I did Ninja <laughs> Warrior, I was, you know, once again, wondering what's next for me. And for a lot of people, they try again for Ninja Warrior and they're like, that was amazing. Now I want to finish and hit the buzzer. You're like, I'm over it. But for, well, for me, I was like, this is the pinnacle of my existence. How am I ever going to be better? That's the thing. I was like, I made it through obstacles. Yes. Like, I'm never going to be any better. So, like, you kind of actually feel like, oh, God, what do I do now? So, um, so I was looking for something else that gets the adrenaline going again. Mm-hmm. Pers- um, and I was and I tried a whole bunch of stuff. Couldn't really figure out what excited me. And then, of course, uh, I'm sorry to say, I went to, I tried a month of CrossFit. Uh, oh. Okay. Hey, let's listen. <laughs> no need to apologize. Listen, every, you are rebellious. Yeah. I am. Uh, you are I, rebellious. I, I don't know what made me I did me like decide. three workouts of theirs. So, you know, I, I tried a there. month, even though I've heard you guys talk. And I do agree with all these things, but I was just bored and it was something different. Actually, if, if CrossFit's suitable for anybody, it would be someone like uh, you. I was just going to yeah, say exactly. that. I was just say, you're the right type of person, I think, to get 
involved exactly. in it. Exactly. So, yeah, so was what was your experience this. like? What did you? Why did you not like it? I did not like it at all because I had the same thought. I was like, I'm going to hurt myself. I have no idea what I'm doing with the Olympic lifts. Mm. That was the biggest Intuition. thing. Intuition. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I did like- Smart, even though um, you didn't go yes. to Harvard. Very, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, do you hear that, mom and dad? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's an A plus judgment right there. Yeah, we would run okay, a mile double. and then I had to lift and do a you know, power clean. I had no idea what I was doing. And I was like, I'm going to hurt myself. So then what I did, because knowing that I probably hurt myself, I was like, I need someone to teach me Olympic lifting. So that's how I started Olympic lifting is I was I started looking for Olympic lifting team or a coach that could teach me just Olympic lifting. And I like that much. I like the lifting weights part. Yeah. I didn't like the cardio part. I like lifting weights because yeah. I've done cardio all my life. So well, aren't you finding? I mean, Olympic lifts are so difficult so and nuanced. Hard. They're technical. Right? Oh, it's a skill. So hard, and I and I love that because it's it looks so simple, mm -hmm. but it's super difficult. And I like that it was not subjective. Yeah. You, you know, you either lift the weights or you don't. There's a number. You know, mm -hmm. it's not. You know, it's it's very objective, and you're only practicing limited movements now i'm a, now are you is this currently the main focus for you right yes now? that is my currently my my current focus is olympic lifting and you're competing yeah. in it yes and i'm competing in okay it. Yeah, so yeah. how many competitions have you done and what are they like um i've done it's been about two years so almost two years um it's been great i love it it's it's a lot of fun just like every other sport that i've done you get into it you meet it's funny because now i've done a few hobbies or whatever and every time i go into a sport everyone thinks that that sport is like you meet people and they're like oh isn't olympic lifting the greatest oh isn't rock climbing the greatest mm -hmm. oh i love it you know everyone thinks <laughs> the, that camp, the camps yeah, yeah everyone beach, thinks it's the swimming. greatest and everyone is like i've grown so much from it i have made lifelong friends and i feel that way about every sport i've done so it's just like the rest it's awesome it's rewarding i love it and i i really like lifting weights so yeah. that was the thing is that I, I love lifting weights. I like the feeling of feeling strong. Yeah, this is yeah. such a great conversation because we have so many listeners that are kind of starting on their fitness journeys or are in the middle of it. And asking someone like you some of these questions is, is so good. So I want to ask you, let's start with nutrition, okay? What part, what thing of nutrition that you changed or what was very pivotal for you? Because there's a lot of changes you can make with nutrition. Like, oh, I'm watching my calories. Oh, I'm working with my carbs, fats. Oh, I'm increasing my protein. Was there one thing that you did where you were like, wow, this made a big difference? Yeah, actually. So, I mean, so about two years ago, I also, during this time when I cared so much about what I look like, um, <clears throat> I started looking for coaches to train me to make me look a certain way. And one of them was you. Mm. Sal, you and Jess coached me for about three months. And I really just wanted to have this ripping six pack that is so unrealistic. And also, I think genetically, it's just, you know, anyways, but that I didn't know that at the time. So, um, and so I really wanted someone to tell me all these things. Like it's it, like you, you you hire a coach and you think they're just going to give me the magical formula <laughs> right. that suddenly I'm going to just look shredded and it's going to be gray and, and, you know, just something I was missing. But that was not the case. So you guys really and I've had other nutritional coaches or other different types of coaches, including a bodybuilding coach who just made me eat chicken and rice all day and I lasted for like three days yeah. and that didn't work so I tried all these different things and then when I came to you guys who I also said I want to look a certain way you were just like let's focus on health and I was like no I want to look good <laughs> so um but at the time um the, the thing is intuitive eating mm. and intuitive eating meaning you know I'll I'll eat something and Jessica will be like how did you feel afterwards? And I would say, oh, I feel a little bloated. Am I not supposed to feel? I, until I got coaching from you guys, I always felt bloated most of my life when I ate anything. Mm -hmm. And I thought that was normal. I thought it was just, I just ate too much. But it turns out, I think it was the foods I was eating. Mm -hmm. And she brought light to that. So that was really, really awesome from both of you to realize that kind of listening to your body sometimes works the best instead of following a very specific protocol of what you think you're supposed to do. Yeah. People don't realize yeah. that when you're eating foods that don't work with your body, even if it's the right macros, you're going to lose, reduce performance. It's going to be harder to burn body fat, harder to build muscle. You're not going to get good sleep. Hormones are not going to be affected as well. It's an important thing to pay attention to. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the intuitive eating was really helpful and also not, and the intuitive part also not feeling restricted was very important because for me, psychologically, if somebody gives me specific macros, 
I feel <clears throat> restricted and want to rebel against it and eat everything in sight versus this you told me just eat whatever you want just but just not processed then it kind of re- it's a psychological thing mm. and suddenly I'm eating better if I'm told to just not eat a bunch of crap I guess versus you have to eat 100 you know grams of protein or something like oh, that. Oh cool. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So yeah. that now, was very helpful. You're also you're also a a coach and trainer yourself. Yes. So mm-hmm. and been listening to the show all the time, been coached by Sal Jessica. What do you find yourself uh repeating that we say a lot? Like what are the things like <laughs> that you, as a coach yourself you're like, "Oh my god, the guys are so right. I always have to say this." What what do you find the most common you're having to say to your clients? Uh to focus on health instead of aesthetics. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That is the mm-hmm. biggest one for sure that I'm always trying to help my clients with which is a it's a process for sure because p- everyone wants to look good so it's hard to it's hard to sell health as, as funny it really as that sounds is. it's like oh yeah healthy that's nice i want to look good though mm-hmm. you know what i mean it's like okay uh, if you're healthy you'll look good you have to really sell it in a way that's appealing otherwise you'll right. lose the battle and also selling to people oh you should eat more instead of less mm, that's, that, a hard that's one. very i don't know i've also posted on forum in the past asking people how do they sell that and i don't know if anyone had a magical how do you guys sell? Well, if you eat less, I mean, eat more, it's going to benefit your metabolism. Yes, yeah. you, you have to hit the <laughs> you have to hit the points that they are that they find most important. So, if someone wants mm-hmm. to lose body fat, yeah. and you want to tell them to eat more, uh, then you got to sell the metabolism boosting effects, the calorie burning effects from the faster metabolism. I always the sell fact them, that makes fat loss easier. I always sell them on the things that they like the most, right? So if I have somebody who's mm-hmm. a wine drinker or they enjoy like a burger every now and whatever the food they like, I always you know give them the ratio of that calorie wise of where they're at right now metabolism wise. So like right now you eat anything more than 1600 calories, you put on weight and you love to have these two glasses of wine. Right. That's the reason why that kills that you so much. you over the scale. Yeah, right, the right. reason why that tips you over so bad is because that's like 30 percent of your calorie intake if we could get your calorie intake up to 2500 you can enjoy these things in your life every mm-hmm. once in a while and not put on body fat yeah, yeah. yeah build your your body up build your metabolism up so you can enjoy those things that you love so yeah, much yeah. now helen I, I remember when i coached you you had also used a lot of the products and stuff that we talk about <laughs> on the show now we're, we're supposed to mention uh our sponsor today organifi i don't know what you're going to say so this is all real and honest <laughs> Have you used any of their products and, and have you found any value in any of their products? Yeah, I got the green juice and because Adam kept talking about this green juice <laughs> and I saw it on sale somewhere. So I was like, OK, score. And I I'll I, I will admit I haven't felt any specific effects, but sometimes it it's it feels good to to just take some if I'm lacking some veggies in my day. But um, that's how I use it. Yeah. So I just been doing that or if I'm traveling or something like that. But I just got some samples of the the pure. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. I've been, I'm that's what that we right fueled now. up. Yeah. Before the podcast. Did you guys notice a mental clarity? Oh, yeah. You know, Is that definitely. Is, yeah. I do notice a little bit. It's not like caffeine. Like you don't take it and you feel it kick in like caffeine, but I'll drink it and then I'll just feel. Uh, it's very subtle. I'll feel yeah. a little bit more sharp. Well, most nootropics, like I just don't have a good response from, and this is just yeah. one of those. Yeah, it's. I think it's to each person's individual in terms of like how you know they do well with what's in sure there. Things, so, but yeah, yeah this is one, a great one for me. Yeah, I think if anybody takes a supplement expecting it to like change, change everything, <laughs> yeah, you're going to be well, super disappointed. Along the lines of supplements, I am. I am curious, regardless of Organifi's commercial and stuff like that, is like protein. Is protein something that you hit on a regular basis pretty easily, or is that something that you tend to have to supplement? I do. I do have to supplement usually yeah. um, a whey protein of some sort. Yeah. 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 So I do that. Do you so find that with clients too? I mean, do you oh find- Oh my God, yes. Right. Everyone, I tell everyone a crazy amount of number for protein to hit just because no one ever hits it. So I figure if I tell them higher, they'll hit a little bit lower. <laughs> oh, there's that psychology. Yes. You're, you're uh-huh. a great trainer. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but they still don't hit it half the time anyways. But um, yeah, it, that's protein is by far. I was one just ever. having that exact yeah. conversation with somebody, I think it was in our forum or on our page or DMs or something. And they were saying like, uh, because I recommend one to one, and the reason why I recommend sure. one to one is because I know if they hit point, they, if they hit point six to point eight, is where I want them to be. But right. the reality is, if I give them that goal, they fall short of that. So I give them one to one, knowing that most people you are know, fall yeah. short. You know, yeah. it's funny in my family because uh, we we run on Italian time. I don't know if you've heard of this before, but essentially, <laughs> if someone says dinner's at six. 
nobody shows up at six. It's usually seven, right? So if you show up at six, you're the only one there. So you'll tell people an earlier time. Yeah. So it's like the same thing. Yeah. Totally. It's at, it starts at five and then everybody will show up on time. Yeah. At six <laughs> o'clock. Yeah. I just think that's one of the hardest macros to hit. And I think yeah. focusing on that. It's satiating. It's yeah. hard. I mean, even if, even a hundred grams of protein, uh, you know, if you're a 130 pound female, Try to eat 100 grams of pro- – how many chicken breasts is that, Adam? How yeah, many like – It's four- like three and a half. Yeah, uh, throughout yeah. the day. And you're just – you just start to get really full. This is why protein helps people lose weight. It just fills you up. It's just hard for the prepping of it, right? I think that's – I think the main reason is that it's – or at least for me as a, as a coach and trainer is like I – most people just – you know, don't realize like, oh wow, if I'm gonna do that, meat is the main source you're gonna get that. I mean, what mm-hmm. you're getting from from nuts and other sources like are just not high enough to hit those numbers. So really, it's like m- most people have to realize like, oh wow, I need to make sure that at least three or four meals have a large mm-hmm. portion of meat in it, and just not the average person does that. Like carbs right. are so readily available and easy when they're hungry. It's just oh, let me grab some pretzels mm-hmm. or grab some snacks or this or that. And then your your calories are filled up with all these carbohydrates yeah. and you never hit your protein. Yeah. Now, now you mentioned that uh, before this all started that you're doing this at home. Like, so you're doing in-home appointments with your clients yes. uh, as yes. a trainer, like, uh, which is great. I, I'm, I'm super glad that, uh, did you have to pivot to that or was that something you were already doing and, and with the current circumstances of not having gyms open and all that, uh, can you tell me about like how that all looks for you? Yeah, I, so I started as an in-home personal trainer about, uh, well, I started full-time. I quit my nine-to-five job. and Wow, uh, that's aw- what was your nine-to-five? I was working for a show called Improv Asylum in Boston, and I was always in theater. I was a lot in theater uh, business management type things, okay. so I did that for like the first 10 years and got into fitness later when I started rock climbing and realizing I need to you know, be a little more fit uh, for that kind of stuff. But then, um, and as I started doing rock climbing, being more fit, I started realizing how much I like fitness, I like lifting weights. And one of the things I love the most was actually teaching women how to lift weights. And that was something Mm. I'm very passionate about, but I have found it sometimes a hard sell uh, even now. And I find it's like a cultural shift that I feel like we should work on. I mean, it's gotten better, but, Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so with in-home training, uh, I started that two years ago. I'm just was trainer working for, uh, by myself, and I, I love just driving to people's homes. It's always a different environment, keeps things interesting. And then the, when the pandemic happened, you know, things shut down, and I wasn't going to people's houses and, you know, freaking out like everyone else. But I've noticed now once when gyms were reopening, at least in Boston, we reopened a while ago. I know for you guys, it reopened. Yeah, and yeah. Then yeah. Just they're closing again. And again, and yeah. all that stuff. But Welcome to California. <laughs> 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 But actually, the pandemic has doing, done well for my business because people are not comfortable going back to the gym. Right. So they're looking to hire in-home trainers. Talk about talk. Yeah. Go back to the, the what you just mentioned about the cultural shift, and because yeah. something interesting about your story, and while I was listening to you talk, is you never seemed to uh, there was it was never taboo for you to do any of these sports or get into Olympic lifting. Mm-hmm. Where it's some there is still this mindset of like you know women don't need shouldn't be doing olympic lifting or power lifting or things like that yeah. talk about your experience of starting to notice that with clients because you did doesn't sound like you felt that way ever yourself or did you i i didn't but i think i enjoy doing sports that are a little that has less women in it so i um but or maybe it was just rock climbing and then ninja warrior but i mean now there's more women and olympic lifting's full of women these days which is great because of the mobility thing but which which i love but um but for sure i've noticed it a lot with clients because i'm all about doing strength training with everyone but in strength training for women they love the circuit stuff they people love the circuit things. they want to so, do cardio with weights yeah because and, of the way that they've been sold for right. so long but it's just so interesting because my i love i i my favorite i mean i shouldn't say this but but some of my my some of my favorite clients are my male clients because i don't have to sell them on strength training it's so easy. They just want to do it. They just need a little help. They need accountability. You need to be there, watch their form, all that stuff. But I don't need to sell them on it, and they love it. But with the women, I have to sell them on it all the time. They'll do it, <laughs> but they'll tend to complain a little bit more. You know, yeah. they'll they'll just be like, oh, but that hurts, or that feels uncomfortable, or it's too heavy. Yeah. yeah. Well, <laughs> have you have you had yeah. to deal with the whole male? Because sometimes guys will give you this. Have yeah. you had, have you had to deal with the ego where the guy's like. 
Oh, uh, I can grab heavier ones. Yeah, I'll, yeah. I'll, do, I'll do more yeah, than yeah, that. Yeah, let's yeah. grab the 40s. I'll do more. Like, well, like, would you do like lateral or front raise? Yeah. And, they, and I'm like, just go, too light. go light on those because you don't need that much. And then they grab like something crazy and they're like, oh, just kidding. I can't, <laughs> I can't actually do that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but uh, yes, for sure. For that's... sure. But I don't mind that because then I, they guys are never like, oh, you know, oh, I hurt something. Oh, I, like I can't lift that because I like pulled something. Yeah, yeah but yeah. you got to pay attention because yeah. then, <laughs> yeah. then they'll be hurt. They, they will hurt right, And they won't tell me. That's the other side is yeah. that they won't tell me that they're hurt. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, we're but, such... but culturally, I just thought it was really interesting that I have to do this battle with the weights thing. I wish I could start them earlier. My biggest thing is like, wouldn't it be great if we could start teenage girls earlier? Yes. Right. Absolutely. Yes. And go into schools and do that. I was like, this is great, guys. We should do this. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, I think I think we're on the cusp. It's of, come a long way. It, for sure. It, oh, yeah. you have no idea. When, we, when I started training, it, it wasn't just convincing women. It was like, okay, fine. I'll just do legs. Yeah. Uh, no, I won't do that. That's a anything heavier than five dumbbell, five pound dumbbells. I won't do. And you had to like uh, constantly talk about. I'd get the. I don't want to turn into a linebacker. Okay, yeah. like, every right. time. And I'm like, I'm not trying to. do That, that. will never happen. Yeah, yeah you'll yeah. be so yeah. blessed yeah. if you could do that. Yeah, right. that would be no, amazing. Yeah, no, it's it's definitely come a long way. But I do feel like we're on the cusp of resistance training really achieving mainstream acceptance. Where you know when they go to the doctor and the doctor says you should start exercising. I think we're getting close to the po- to the point where people start to think, I think I'll do some resistance training versus I'm going to go running or cycling or, or something else. What? I think we're getting close. Why do you think we're on the cusp of that? I think we're on the cusp of it for a couple of different reasons. Studies are confirming the benefits of resistance training oh. tremendously, yeah. like huge. Strength is by itself a great predictor of all-cause mortality, better than cardiovascular endurance. And strength. There were studies now that show that strength training is better for, uh, as, as good or even better in some cases for heart health. Um, and then you have the popularity of uh, female athletes that are in strength sports. So more and more of these female athletes that look like they're fit and toned and women are saying, oh, I kind of want to look like that. So that's helping I also, I also think that uh, just information is more readily available. And yeah. so it, it moves quicker where, you know, 20 plus yeah. years ago, you know, a myth, the myth around women yep. lifting weights is going to make them bulky could stick around longer because you couldn't just get online real quick and Google that that's not true. Yeah. Right. Where today that it's so much easier. You hear information like that. You can search it really I think, quick. too, it depends on who they're following on Instagram. That's so true. <laughs> Let's be honest. Yeah, that makes a big difference. Yeah. So the w- one more, we were supposed to mention one more sponsor, but this is going to be funny because I asked you about this earlier and I said, have you ever used Z-Biotics? And you said you don't drink <laughs> at all. Do you do anything to let loose? Sm- smoke, a, <laughs> smoke a joint? I lift weights over uh, my head. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> hey, hey, great answer. I love that. Great answer. I or, love that. Yeah, or swim in freezing yeah. cold water. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Jesus, Sal, what else do you need? You're pretty right. high from that, Sal. That's, <laughs> you, don't, you don't need cocaine so, if you do these things. So you're not going to... Whoa, whoa, yeah. whoa, jump there. So you're not going to buy the 48-pack yeah, of Z-Box? Z-Box doesn't like, help with that. Like no, Justin gets. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, this will this will last me over the weekend. No, we. so I actually just... Yeah, I speaking like of that, loose. I, I just found that. So on their website, they have, uh, you know, the I think it's like 3, 6, 9, 12-packs. And then in small print, uh, you know, Jerry was looking this up for us because she's like, you know, we keep buying these 12-packs in between the four owners, the staff, like... Like these things mm-hmm. don't last very long at all. So she emailed in and they'll actually make you a deal if you buy in bulk. So they don't they don't sell it on their website as a normal package, but you can email them in that, hey, we're looking for this many and they'll they'll make you a better deal than what their mm-hmm. packages are. Mm-hmm. So for those people that have tried Z Biotic, absolutely love it and it's something that you want and you want to save money, uh, you can actually buy in, in more bulk than oh, what they cool. have on the website. Now you have had alcohol though. It's not like you've never had it before. <laughs> yeah, yes, I have. Okay. So before you leave, I'll give you some. When you go oh. home, I want <laughs> you to test it and I okay. want you to to let because it'll it's weird. It's yeah. not like, like this. It's not yeah. below. It's actually quite weird. It's very strange. Yeah, it's pretty magic. Yeah. So we'll send you some. We'll okay, send you off with some. Yeah. And then test it out. Go hang out with your boyfriend, whatever. Have a good time. It's like <laughs> a break this in case of emergency. Kind exactly. Of thing. That's how I use it. Exactly. I can't because that's like a, it's like defining love. It's I know. For, for every person, it's different, man. Yeah, yeah you're. I mean, what's one person considers fit esoteric. may not be fit for someone else, like a, a bodybuilder. Might be very fit for their workouts, but would be terribly unfit for uh, you know running a marathon uh, or swim, 